Welcome to another video explaining the universe using the particle model. Today's video is the second video on the cathode ray tube. The first was on electrostatic deflection. This is on magnetic deflection. This is a very interesting uh, video uh, showing the deflection with a disc magnet. And the gentleman here is holding a disc magnet just above the cathode ray tube. And the, the direction he's holding it is such that the ray goes down. And over here, he flips the disc magnet over, still holding it above, and the ray goes up. But if you notice, this is a very unusual uh, ray. It's not a typical display, and I will go get into that towards the end of the video. Well, the standard model explains deflection using the left-hand rule. What they're saying is there is a force that causes the ray to deflect. Standard model does not tell us what the force is. It only tells us the direction the ray moves using the left-hand rule. Yeah, I looked. I want to say, the, find an explanation, a physical explanation that really tells what the force is and how the, why the left-hand rule applies. You can't find it. The TPM model, the model, suggests that the force on the ray is the F2 force. And the F2 force is the net force developed around every object by the G2 gravity particle field. That's the force that deals with the motion of nucleons and uh, electrons, if you will. But in the particle model, that's the N1 particle and the G and the um, G1 particle. So uh, that's what uh, we're going to show at the, in this video that that's how it works and that it matches the left-hand rule. Okay, so let's compare the, uh, uh, the rules but that the standard model uses and the particle model uses. And this is a typical drawing of a hand and two magnets and the, uh, you, you point your finger in one direction and your middle finger in the, at right angles to it and your thumb will point up. So let's, uh, the index finger is pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. In the standard model, the magnetic field goes from the south to the north through the gap, again, south to north and around. Index finger in the direction of the magnetic field. Then you point your middle finger in the direction of the current. And, and this is not about a ray. This is about a wire, but it applies equally well. And they're saying that if the current goes this way, then your index point finger points in, I mean, your middle finger points in that direction. When you do point here, point here, automatically your thumb points up and they're saying that's the direction of the force. That's what, that's all this left-hand rule tells you is the direction of the force by applying this left-hand rule. Well, it turns out that the particle model is, is the same. Now, I, I played around with this, and, and I changed the arrow here for the direction of the uh, G1s through the magnet, and I changed the direction of the G1s uh, indicated by the uh, middle finger. And, and, and so you have to change both of these. And it turns out, and you can do this with your left hand, is uh, you can push this finger around to the other side and push this finger down and uh, around pointing this way. And what you find is that the thumb ends up pointing straight up. So it turns out that the left hand rule works for the particle model just as it works for the standard model. Now part of the ex explanation of the uh, cathode ray deflection with the magnetic field involves the magnetic field around the ray, or this shows it around a wire. Again, they're equivalent. And here they use 
the right hand rule. The right hand rule applies, you, you point your thumb in the direction of the current, which is going this way, and the magnetic field uh, uh, develops around the wire, goes, uh, uh, goes up the backside around the top and down the front. That's the, the direction, and it's, it's showing counterclockwise as we view it this way. Well, to get the same thing, of course, you have uh, the flow of the G1 particles in the opposite direction, and all I did was flip this over. These words are backwards, but you can't read them anyway, but it turns out that you end up the same thing, but here you have to use the left-hand rule, here you use the right-hand rule. So the standard model uses the left-hand rule to show you the direction of the force on the, mag on the ray or the wire, and they, they use the right hand sh to show this. But in the particle model, the left-hand rules, we use the left hand in both cases. So now I'm going to explain the, that first step, which is to explain the physics of the magnetic field around a uh, copper wire or around the cathode ray tube. And I've explained this before in a video. In fact, it's one of my very first videos that David made while I was sitting here. And, and uh, the video is titled, The, uh, the Right-Hand Rule Becomes the Left-Hand Rule for this defining the flow. And so I'm using an example of a copper wire, and this is the structure, one of, uh, one of the examples you get on the internet of copper atoms. And as a cor the G1 particle flows easily through the copper wire this way or that way, up or down, in or out, the, uh, the organization of these atoms are, are the same in all directions. So it doesn't matter which direction you're going, you're going to get a motion uh, through it, but it's not going to go straight through. Uh, they're going to fly, uh, fly. They're going to move in a in a uh, horizontal zigzag motion or a vertical zigzag motion or both. If they move in both, you might get a spiral, and it's this spiral motion that I claim sets up the fact that when you look at the, uh, for example, look at the. Uh, G1 particle coming out of the page from behind here and out, that is always clockwise. It's always clockwise because of the structure of this, the G2 gravitational forces inside and the spiral motion always makes it the same, such that when you look at it coming at you from behind through and out, it's always clockwise. But what about the cathode ray? Uh, the cathode, you know, the G1 particles leave the battery, go through a wire, come to the, uh, the uh, cathode plate, and all of a sudden they're free to move, and there's no, no structure here to control the flow. If this is critical for making it always a, uh, the uh, left-hand rule for the particle model, there's no structure, there's no spiral path. I, I even questioned originally whether there'd even be a magnetic field around this, because you need it to make it work, as the other explanations indicate. Then I started looking at it, I, I remembered, I already stated, and I finally remembered the connecting wire from the battery to the cathode is a copper wire and will guide the G1 in a spiral path until it is emitted. So let's take this a little bit a step at a time. Let's assume that we just turned it on and now there's a ray moving out. It's, it's out there and the uh, G1s are being emitted. And the, the G1s right here at the surface, while they're in the plate, are still have this pattern, a clockwise pattern. Now let's take a look at, at the wire or the wire, ray for that matter. This is a, uh, I actually drew it red like it was a, a ray. The dot, red dot means it's coming out towards you and the magnetic field is to be clockwise. 
Well, if the spiral motion in the copper is in the uh, in the clockwise direction, as you see it coming toward you, you look at it from behind, it's coming clockwise. You look at it coming at you, it's clockwise. And so I've drawn this little circle. Uh, it's the path. It's coming. It's coming at you, and in a spiral way. So as soon as it leaves. As soon as it leaves the cathode plate right back here, this is free to go straight. This, out, this is straight down, straight left, straight up, and, 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 and all around. So once this is F2 force is established around this, uh, initially the step one was to put this uh, out there and there will be a gravitational D2 gravity around this, which I call F2 force, around this one. And as soon as th th it leaves, although there, there's no more spiral control here within the stream, you have an F2 force and they're initially released in all these different directions and can get trapped and go around. They're moving very fast. They're moving forward. They're moving out of the page fast towards you. So they're moving down fast and they're being controlled in a spiral fashion as they go out. The only way I could think of how a magnetic field would exist around a cathode ray. Much more easy for a copper wire because there's uh, there is a structure all the way. Here there is no structure. TPM explaining how there is a magnetic field around the cathode ray. That's the first step. Now this is another video, only this time the video shows a bar magnet. And the uh, gentleman has a, a bar magnet. He's holding it horizontal. He's bringing it down until it's even with the ray. And yes, it goes down. Then he flips it over. He doesn't tell us which one is which. He just flips it over. And then it, it moves it down, and even with the ray, and it shows it going up. So this is the one uh, example I'm going to uh, try to explain. Now, the standard model simply uses the left-hand rule. This rule, which I just explained, and, and the, use your index finger, uh, your uh, middle finger and your thumb and you can see that the magnetic field is going the same way you can see that the current is coming this way but but here you got the cathode on the left so you got particles moving this way or electrons moving this way so therefore the current is going the other direction the current's not going this way it's going in so what you have to do with the left hand rule is you, you got to take your left hand and I'm going to take it this way and I'm going to take the, uh, the current and I'm going to uh, flip it so it's the other direction, which is to uh, uh, see the current is, I've got to remember now, no, here, that's it. There. This is the current. You flip it the other direction and when you turn it over and flip it, it shows it going down. So I'm using the left hand rule pointing my fingers in the direction that's indicated by this, and it goes down. Left-hand rule works, right? But it doesn't tell you what this force is. By the way, the text in here, I, I love this. Every time I see it, I just get riled up because the text says that the rays behave like an ordinary electric current and obeys Fleming's left-hand rule. Sorry. Nature doesn't obey any left-hand rule, right-hand rule, any statement man writes, or any equation man writes. Nature does not obey anything. That's, 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 uh, uh, ah, just makes, gets me upset. Well, finally now, here is the explanation for the deflection of the cathode ray. I'm gonna, I, I, I apologize, this is a very busy drawing. Uh, but I put it all together. I'm going to start with the cathode ray, which is here, both mostly pink in this case, the light red, with the dot, red dot in the middle, meaning the ray is coming out towards you. 
And as I previously explained, it's going to have a magnetic field going around in a clockwise direction. Well, then you bring the magnet up and you point the north end of the magnet towards the ray like the gentleman did in the video. And in the particle model, the G1 particles flow from the north to the south, around and back and through here. Same way here, north to south, around and back and through. So you have the uh, magnetic field of the magnet going into the in the same direction this way. But the, the magnetic field around the ray is going to the right at the top, to the left at the bottom. So up here there is a conflict. You've got a, a particle coming this way, and you've got a particle coming around this way, and there is a potential for a collision, and when they hit they both scatter and disappear you end up in this area with losing G1s. But down here, you have G1 particles coming through here and all the way through the magnet. Now, G1s go through, a, if they can go through a magnet, they can go through this field here. Okay, yeah, there'll be some collisions, a few collisions, but for the most part, you have a double, almost, you know, almost double like of the number here. By the way, you have double up here too, but you're going to have a lot of collisions. Double here, a lot of collisions. Double here, very few collisions. The end result is that this green arrow represents the number, the uh, amount of G1s up here, and then you have the a larger amount of G1s down here, and this is where the imbalance comes from. And just like the uh, moon and the earth, the, if you just consider the moon and the earth as a system, the, the general, the, the net force is generally all towards the earth. In this case, it's all towards the larger range of G1s. Yes, there's forces up and there's forces down, but here, when you look at the net, when net force, there's a gradient just like our square up here, where there's a force on them and it gets stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And it pushes these this ray down in the process. That is the physical explanation of why it bent in the downward direction. This physical explanation explains why the left hand rule works. Okay, I told you I was going to come back to this one. This is interesting, and this is uh, uh, this is with the disc magnet. Okay, this is with a bar magnet down here, and this is the way it looks with the bar magnet. But this is totally different. Something is going on here that's not the same. I first looked at that and thought, "Wow, this is neat." The ray is, looks like it's actually going into the bar, the disc magnet. The, the, uh, it would imply that the flow of, of uh, the magnetic field itself, in this case, is going up, around, and through, and, and going up around this way and through. But the, but the problem is down here. How does it go down, almost instantly go down, and, I, and I'm not sure I can even understand that. Well, you know, there, there's an F2 force field around the magnet and around the ray. We, I just went through all that. The F2 forces are going to be generally, t the, the, strong, the, mag the magnet stronger is going to be in, uh, towards the magnet. Well, the ray is going away from, this is going away from the magnet, not towards it. So it's not the F2 force field that causes this. Uh, well, there's another possibility. I already said that the field is going up, around, and down over here. Of course, up, around, and down over here too, but there's no ray over there. That could be the one pushing it down. Not sure I do, you know, the, uh, how strong that, ray, that is to push it down. Almost seems like it's going down before it even gets out. But anyway, assuming here's one additional point. It's going down and it hits the inside bottom of the tube and reflects up. 
And that's why since it's going down and hits, it reflects up, it's already going in this direction and the this magnet bends it more. I don't, you know, don't really know what's causing it down, but those are my thoughts about the uh, what might be happening. Okay, the summary. The st standard model does not tell us what the magnetic field is around a wire or array. It does not tell us what the force is. It only tells direction. The particle model suggests the magnetic field comes from G1s flowing through the wire or the ray. And, and it gets a magnetic field, and, and yes, I expect that they're flowing through the wire in a spiral fashion, and they're emitted into the ray that we see in a spiral way and get trapped that way and move along the ray. And it also suggests that the force on the ray or the wire is the F2 G2 gravity force, TPM, explaining the bending of the ray. My name is Bob DeHilster, and I am your particle model guru. Tune in next time when I'll explain more of the universe using the particle model. Thank you for your attention.